All right, um, continuing on with the work for the uh, dual cooling fans, what I've done here is I've temporarily installed the fans and I've cut the length of the, of the cable that's on the motor or the fans just to get rid of a lot of the bulk. So what, um, uh, what I also did was I bought uh, off of Amazon a 560-piece, uh, uh, 2.54 millimeter uh, housing and connector set, and it gives me all of the quint pins and uh, sockets, and and um, and, and there are so and there are associated heads. So um, this is going to make the job a lot neater, a lot easier, because I'll have all the parts. And um, let's uh, trim this back and we're going to strip them. I kind of strip back enough to where um, uh, I don't have to worry about the shrinkage, which uh, inevitably you're going to get with the PVC wire not being thermally uh, uh, resistive. Uh, it, it melts right at the same, uh, well, much lower temperature than solder. So you got to be very quick with these uh, connections. So. There we go. Let the iron warm up. Get the uh, Pins ready. I'm going to need uh, four of these, obviously. I tend to leave them on the uh, the, the the loading strip because it just gives it uh, a little bit more for me to handle as I'm putting it in there. Because I'm going to do this by hand. I don't have a crimp tool, so I've got to do this by hand. So. I'm just gonna pretend these. Always good to have a bottle of um, flux so that you can uh, just make the cleaner connections. Uh, than you would if you just, uh, oops, let's get this out of here, uh, used solder by itself. Even though solder comes with flux in it, it burns off very quick and this just kind of, um, not kind of, it makes uh, your solder connections just, uh, or your solder just so much nicer. I've been doing this for 40 plus years. One of the oddities, I'm an engineer that uh, also solders pretty good. There we go. That's all done. Now I need me I need my microscope because I'd be blind. So I'm going to be getting a microscope with a camera uh, attachment. Uh, I don't have it yet, so I'm going to do the attachment and then uh, we'll, we'll come back after that. Okay, well this is kind of interesting. In my uh, modding the length of these cables, um, I followed, of course, the polarity associated with one unaltered motor and got the uh, polarity correct as far as the uh, orientation of these connectors are concerned, uh, whereas on the insert side, this is plus, this is minus, this is plus, this is minus, and the same there. And the reason why I'm pointing these out is as I was modifying my 40 inch or 40 millimeter fan, it's, it's reverse of these. Now, I can only assume that the printer has been suitably uh, wired to accommodate because uh, I've not blown out a fan and I've not heard anybody 
uh, in the various forums or YouTube that uh, has pointed this out, so um, I'm wondering why I'm the first to uh, notice it and make a deal out of it. Uh, I guess being the engineer, it's uh, just funny that I've got a bunch of compatible motors, compatible being they're all 24 volt motor, uh, DC motors, and yet they're keying in a identical connector, oops, is backwards. That's kind of, that's kind of odd. So anyways, be very aware of that. Don't use, don't use one connector as your, as your guide. Make sure that you are wiring it specific to these motors and specific to these motors. And then when you get to the printer, you shouldn't have an issue, but we'll find that out when we get there. So just wanted to point that out. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was kind of um, odd, but you know, what are you going to do? Just as long as we're aware of it, we can make sure that when we do the installation in the printer, plus goes to plus, minus goes to minus, and everything is okay. All right, I'm just temporarily uh, installing the, uh, the fans. Uh, just curious how much uh, air comes out through the, um, through the bottom. Uh, does that line up? That's not the right screw. There we go. That's good. Can't leave it on permanent because I have to have access to these screws. Um, because uh, when it's when it's going in, obviously uh, you're going to want to adjust. Uh, I'm sorry, this way, adjust its position relative to the print head itself. So um, I'm just temporarily putting the screws in. Um, I'm not even going to put the nut on it. All right. It's out of good amount of air. And let's see how well, where did my, all right, where did the old post ups go? Oh, there it is. That feels really good. I'm very anxious to get this in there. I think I'm going to let these run for a little while. Um, always good to break things in and uh, burn them in, make sure, and maybe that's the wrong term we use that in the industry, but you let them sit here and run because uh, uh, if they're going to fail, usually they'll fail right, to, right out of the box and uh, Best to catch it now before you go and install it. Now, I'm going to be taking my time on this. I've got so much going on right now um, uh, with things unrelated to the printer um, that, uh, besides, the longer I let this uh, sit, uh, the better I can I can think things out. Now, there was a question about the. Uh, um, uh, the uh, the BL touch. This is the fixture and the BL touch uh, mount. And then what happens is this fits in this slide. The BL touch fits on there, and you can adjust this up and down to dial it in um, and get it fairly close to where it's at in the printer. But even when you get it installed and you think you've got it perfectly uh, aligned, you're going to want to go back and, and run a, um, 
uh, a re uh, a, a recal on the Z Homan. Um, or, or, uh, yeah. So, anyways, that's it for now. Bye.